Hey guys, today I'm coming to you from the streets of Birmingham. Now this is one of the biggest cities in the UK. You can probably tell right now that this is just a stone's throw away from me based on my accent. I rarely come here and do street photography, which you might think is strange, but I don't like it when it's really busy. That's not kind of my, my comfort zone when I'm out shooting. So I like it when it's a bit quieter and right now it's perfect. I'm here with my R6 and my 24 through to 105 hourglass RF lens. Now I'm lucky enough to just have this tram come past me, so I wanted to get a picture of this as it disappears into the distance. My focus point is on the tram to create just a slight bit of motion blur, and as you'll see in a minute, I've got the details on the left hand side of the settings I use. What I love about Birmingham now and how much it's changed recently is you've got this tram system which runs through most of the city and it creates some really nice leading lines. Now I love this brickwork here of the building and I noticed that this couple were coming through an electric scooter. Fortunately for me, I just managed to get it in time as they're right in the middle of the building here. I wanted to get a lower down picture of this as well so that you could see these tram lines striking through the image as a strong leading line taking you right through. I actually really like this photo. Now I decide to actually go up the hill here and you'll see my dad on the left hand side, he joined me once again. What I really like about this part of the city centre right here is that it's actually quiet but you've got this mix of architecture, you've got the old and new which come together. Now this is a picture which I wanted to get a corridor here, creating this strong sense of light in the distance on the clock tower building. I wasn't quite getting the composition I wanted, but that tram wasn't hanging around. With the tram lines, I thought it'd be a good idea to actually just shoot down low and get a picture where the tram lines would carry your eye up to the clock tower in the distance. A quick look over my shoulder to make sure I wasn't gonna get run over and then I just wanted to frame this up, get my focus point right, and then take the picture. Now, any of these images that you look at and you think they might look a little bit different, I'm actually using my streets preset pack in some of these photos. If you're interested in that, just jump on into the description and you can grab a copy by clicking the link there. Now look at this building. You've got this almost American style high rise building here which is shrouded at the bottom by this old architecture. And I think this makes a beautiful picture of old and new coming together. When you're in a big open place like this and there's lots to look at, sometimes it can be a good idea to spend a little bit of time scanning the area before you just rush off. And that's what I decided to do in this moment. I was really impressed by that building in the distance and I wanted to stay here for a little while just to see if I could get another composition and make it work from a different angle or perspective. Now when I set up here to get another picture, this time with this old style light, on the left hand side and these posts, I was just about to take the picture and I didn't actually realize that I had these three or four people walking through the image. So I just needed to give them a little bit of time to move by so that I could actually snap the picture that I wanted. Now I've turned this one also black and white and I've done that with just a few images today because street photography can work so well when you turn it black and white. Now this is my last picture and probably my favorite of this building. I use these beautiful posts here as a strong leading line drawing you right into the building in the distance and here's the image and how it came out. Walking a bit further up, I noticed the clock tower. We've got almost to the door of it now. And the Colosseum part, these pillars here, work so well. They've got such beautiful detail and texture. And I just had to take a little bit of time to kind of build the right composition here just so that I could capture this part of the building because that's what stood out to me. And it doesn't always have to be about the perfect composition. Sometimes it can be about the feeling of an image 
that you get when you just look at it through your camera. To get the kind of size of this building, I wanted to shoot down low and shoot up here. Now walking further up here, I noticed that there was a few more people around in this extremely quiet city. Sometimes it feels a little bit eerie because I'm not used to being in a city that's this quiet. I noticed this corridor of light in the distance on the building. The sun had just come through the clouds and I really wanted to capture that with some people walking towards the camera. Now I lined up, I noticed there's these three people here, just make sure I get my focus point in the distance so I can blur them out. And this is how it came out. I decided to turn it black and white because of the contrast between the light and dark. Now this was one of these times that I didn't really have a composition in mind that I saw. I just got a feeling that there was this nice bit of kind of green foliage here or foliage and I just wanted to get this right in the foreground and blur out this building here and just get some light which was coming on it. Once again, I didn't know what the composition was gonna look like. I just got a feeling for it. And to be honest, it actually worked out pretty well. Sometimes shooting just parts of buildings in street photography is really so rewarding and this building was one of them. Just the kind of colour and the way the windows were very reflective and almost metallic looking. I think it works so well in this image and it's an image that I'm actually really happy with from today's shoot. Now at this point I've been walking around probably for about 30 minutes and I felt that I'd stayed in this area quite a long time. I didn't want to stay here too long, I wanted to move around and see if I could find some more images. But they just felt like there were so many kind of opportunities to take photos here and this was one of them. I imagine this would look really nice in black and white with the, the kind of light in the background and these steps going down. And it does look nice as you'll see in a moment. It's nothing special, but it's just one of them kind of iconic looking street photography photos. Now, I can't remember what happened here. I think my dad was telling me a joke or something. Um, but when I'm out taking photos, I'm just constantly looking around everywhere at opportunities. Um, and I seen this lovely marble kind of shape, which is curving around to the left-hand side. And I knew this would work with the buildings in the background, but I just couldn't frame it to start with. So I spent a little bit of time just getting this right until I had something in my screen, which I was actually really quite happy with. And this is how it came out. Now you will see today that a lot of my settings that I use when I'm out doing street photography are quite similar. I usually kind of jump between f4 and f8 and that's because my lens is f4 uh, wide open. I don't find that I actually use much kind of uh, depth of field in my street photography and if I know that that's the kind of style I'm going for I will definitely put a prime lens on which is usually a 35mm, the RF version which is a 1.8. Now I love this corridor here of these two, these pillars on the left hand side and on the right hand side you've got these beautiful kind of vertical shaped windows. Now my dad actually pointed this out to me, it's not something that I saw, but I needed to get higher up so that I could get the angle that I wanted. And it's worth doing this when you're looking for a photo. If you look at something, it seems like it's going to work, just see if you can get it from a different perspective and find an image which you know then will work from a certain angle. Now I really could have stayed up there for so much longer but I didn't want to be walking around too long with the restrictions the way they are, just keeping this at about 45 minutes to an hour exercise maximum. Now I love I love it when with street photography you get these corridors of light which light up sections of the building and this here I thought would work out nice. I could have turned this image black and white 
but uh, I decided to actually keep it colour, as you'll see in a minute. Just had to wait for these Birmingham buses to kind of work their way around before I could get the composition which I was happy with. And here it is. Now, if you've got any questions at this point, guys, about the settings or anything you'd like to know, make sure you put them in the comments section of the video and I'll be sure to check them out and answer any queries you've got. Now, this was one that I saw really quickly. I loved these old keg style barrels. I knew the composition was going to work with the light and the distance and quickly, as this couple got through, I snapped it and I think this actually works so well. Now this is coming to the end of the walk and I'm nearly finished now, but I just wanted to get one of these kind of uh, iconic style street sign uh, photos, which I thought was nice with the light, just lighting up the corner of the building. Now I've really enjoyed it out in Birmingham today and I'll probably be visiting, visiting here, sorry, in the next couple of weeks or so, and then checking out the other side of the city and shooting around there. Um, but just before I actually finished taking photos, I wanted to get this one last photo here. I wasn't sure how it was going to work, but I knew that I wanted to frame this building at the top with these nice candle style lights. And in the end, I ended up going for this and then just focusing on the building in the distance. I want to thank you guys for watching the video today and joining along. If there's any suggestions you've got for these kind of videos, make sure you let me know in the comments below. And guys, if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you join the channel. Um, there's lots of you that watch my videos regularly that just haven't subscribed. And I'd love you guys to be part of the community here at Ben's Guide. Whatever you do for the rest of the day, guys, make sure it's a good one. I'll see you in the next video.